y'all so i'm back this week and finally finally on pretty much every show we this week we got us some substance we got us something that had me like and okay i was waiting for that so the first show i'm gonna start with is sisters because they had the you know the least exciting things to happen so i'm gonna go ahead and dive into sisters um right off bat i want to shout out to my girl fatima on sisters because girl she guessed she is definitely most definitely my favorite character okay she told hayden straight up neighbors got cameras out there so i seen old boy put them drugs in that truck i know how tight y'all are don't play with me don't try to lie i know you did it so i don't know which frat brother judge you gotta call but you need to go ahead and get him out of jail and i want him out of jail before the sun come up in the morning and guess what Zach was right on up out of jail because don't play with him. She not playing with y'all. Don't play with Zach because why would you set him up? And then, ugh, and then Hayden had the nerve to be talking about some, why don't you like me? What? She said, I'm going to keep it straight up with you. Straight up. I don't like you. Like what she should have told him was, because she did kind of read him for filth, but what she should have told him was, any little chance that you thought you had has just now disappeared from the stunt you pulled. What type of man, black man, will try to set up another black man to go to jail for a woman who don't want you, bro? That's what she should have told him. That would have hit him because he would have felt like, dang, I just messed up my chance I had. No, bro. You didn't have any chances, okay? You messed it up. But I'm so happy that Zach is out of jail. They still haven't talked about this credit card situation with Karen at all. So maybe that's the finale. I think next week is the finale. So maybe they'll talk about the credit card situation and if uh, Zach going to go to jail for it or are we going to find out who actually charged the credit card? Who knows? But they ain't talked about it yet. Um, I do want to talk about Danny and... Um, Preston. Danny is really going to lose Preston if she do not figure out how to control her emotions and control how she feeling. Nobody about to play this cat and mouse game with you. Preston, now that's a real man. That is not no boy. He's not about to play no games with her. And especially because he's not, he wasn't raised in the same culture as her. The same type of toxicity. So he don't know when you say leave, you only mean leave and come back. He take it as like, I'll respect your space. You said you want me to leave. I'm going to go ahead and go. But she want to play this cat and mouse game. He like, come on now. We're not going to play these games. Tell me what's up. What is it? And she like, you just don't get it. Well, tell me. Communicate. Use your words. We're adults. Tell me what it is. And I can help you. And I can understand you. We can be together. But Danny totally handled that whole sister coming over her house situation wrong. Period. Okay, he didn't tell you she was coming, but you don't be rude to nobody. I don't care if it's your house, his house, anybody's house. When there's a guest in your home, you are not rude to that guest. Especially a guest that has not disrespected you. The sister ain't did nothing to you. Granted, his brothers are assholes. Okay, cool. You can assume maybe she might be one too. She has not gave you any indication that she is one or that she is like them. So ain't no need to disrespect her or be rude. She's here being nice, being kind. Clearly being kind. So I just felt like Danny handled that all wrong. Like me as Preston, that would have had me feeling some type of way because even if you're upset that, you know, I brought somebody around, you're going to be an a-hole to them. Don't do that. We could have this conversation later, you know, after my sister gone, we can talk about how you felt like I should have told you first and what the bam. Yes, he should have told her first, first, but come on now, Danny. Do we got to be rude to everybody drinking this wine all willy nilly and everything like that? Like, come on, bro. Relax. Simmer down. It's okay. She's not going to do anything to you. But we don't know if she is with that Rura and going to send them brothers over there. But even if she wasn't, and then, say for instance, you pissed her off here in this situation before she wasn't, but now she is because you didn't piss her off. You know, people will like that. Like, 
well, I did like it, but since she did this, now I'm going to do that. You know, type type shit. So it's like, mm, then you got to be more careful with what you're doing and how you're treating people. Instead, you're trying to prevent, you may cause. Just based on your attitude. And then, Miss Andy. I don't think, yes, it did. When, this, when the episode came back on, it really, really, really blew me that Andy told Karen, I really don't want to have to fall out with you over Gary. Excuse me? You telling me, your best friend, that you're going to fall out with me over this fool? Because I'm trying to tell you that you keep getting into relationships with these abusive men this is not your first abusive relationship and i see the signs and you clearly do not i don't want to see you go through this again last time oh boy had you beat up battered and all that this dude almost killed you a few days ago and you telling me you don't want to fall out with me over him because you want to be married that bad you want to be married to this guy who is abusive manipulative conniving crazy jealous that bad and you're gonna fall out with me because i'm trying to protect you i'm trying to be your friend that really had me like wow andy has fucking lost her marbles no she did not and that's all i'm gonna say on andy and then karen really <sighs> Karen ain't really had nothing going on. Just this conversation she had with Andy. And they did show us a little clip of her in the past and running into the bedroom. Well, we know there ain't going to be nothing. Because he on this, he not having no sex with her and all of this stuff. So I don't even know why Tyler Perry be trying to act like something going to happen. Boy, bad with that. How about they he run in that room and tell her that he swiped that dang on credit card? How about that? Run and tell that. How about that? Ooh, it is something I want to say. And um, when she, when Karen was talking to Aaron about the Gary situation, Aaron wanted to say, well, Gary isn't really a bad guy. He this, 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 and this. So you cool with him. You think his behavior is okay. Because now I'm looking at you crazy. Now I'm looking at you different. Are you like him? And I don't understand how Karen is sitting up here talking to Aaron because when they first met at the grocery store, he was rude to her. Rude AF. And then when she went on that date with him, when he was still married to that other woman, he left his wallet and he called the wife disrespectfully to the restaurant to bring his car so he could pay for his dinner with another woman. And then he forced his wife to get a divorce. Yes, he forced her to sign those papers. I remember that. And then the wife came and killed herself in front of Karen at Karen's business. Yes, yeah, she did. And Karen, you want to deal with this man. Ever since you met this man, it ain't been nothing but turmoil. Why? I don't think that's good. I don't think that's good. I really don't. I don't think anything good is going to come from this Karen and Aaron relationship. I don't see it. I don't want to with him. I don't like him. I, that's just it. That's just all. And then to go ahead and put the icing on the cake for the episode. The Sabrina situation with the old boy from the bank whose name I don't remember. What's the boy name from the bank? Irrelevant. It don't matter. He is a thirsty. And, and Sabrina is stupid. You do not bring no strange man to your house after y'all done had drinks. You don't, do not bring no strange man to your house and let him influence you to keep having drinks when you really don't want him in your house. Three, this man is over thirsty, sitting here trying to have a hard on and seduce her and all of this looking un just tacky. Bro, we work together. We have work in the morning. Ain't nobody finna get overly drunk with you when you accidentally have sex with you if that's what you thought. Like, ugh, he was just so thirsty. He was giving me predatory vibes. I did not like it. I was really glad that they did not have him like do anything to Sabrina because that's the vibes he was giving off. And I I don't want to see that. I don't want to see nothing happen to that girl. She a little naive, but baby. Mm -mm. I don't want to see no sexual assaults happening to her. 
Especially with oh Jacoby is his name. Especially with no Jacoby because baby baby, no, absolutely not. But what's really gonna get Sabrina is the fact that Maurice comes back to their apartment and see that Calvin is supposedly having sex with the man. That's the way the scene is set up. And I was kind of thinking like maybe it's a setup to like try to trick Maurice into thinking like, oh yeah, y'all was right all along. I do like men and all this stuff because Maurice, Calvin, and some other dude randomly played a, played a prank on Sabrina like that. But I don't think this one a prank. I really think he is, you know, maybe bisexual. But my whole thing is, why you lying if you are? Nobody cares. If you're a bisexual man, be a bisexual man. You have two fathers, okay? If you want to like men, you want to like women, just say that. Like the panties was weird. The vibrating your booty was weird. She still stuck value, but you lied about it. That's what's going to be the icing on the cake. She asked him multiple times and he wants to have an attitude talking about you judging me, this, that, and the third. Am, am I judging you? Because this is what it really seemed like. Look like a duck, duck, quack like a duck. It's a duck. Bro, you're bisexual. That's okay. And for him to be trying to hide it don't make no sense. You hang out at the, the gay bar. Like, what you had? Just be honest. Who gonna be mad? I don't get that. But I'm waiting to see how that, what's gonna unfold from that situation. If it is, a, is it a prank or what? What's going on? But that concludes all the thoughts I had on sisters. I'm going to roll into Grownish because Grownish was the second most least climactic, I, I want to say. Yeah. So what happened on this episode of Grownish? As and Skyla went to the tryout for the Olympic trials or whatever, Skyla made a jazz didn't. So everybody looking like, damn, she ain't make it. That was what was the, that was what the whole episode was about. The whole episode was about them throwing a party and then watching them try out for the Olympic trials because you know the whole season been leading up with this drama with Jazz and Doug about how she needed to prepare for the season because she was distracted all that. She did all this, you know, not wanting him to be a distraction, and she still didn't make it. So when she come back, she probably gonna be feeling some type of way. I don't know. Hopefully she don't say she wanna quit track because of it. But her sister did make it, so that's good. The next line of drama was for me. Nomi and her baby daddy. Um, I like the fact that Nomi's baby daddy is not a jerk. Like, because the way they was making it seem like he was just some type of jerk that she hooked up with one time. And that's why she didn't want to, you know, tell him about the baby and all of that stuff. But when they brought him onto the scene, he a cool dude. He actually really liked her. Or at least can grow to like her from what I'm seeing. So the episode, well, the episode didn't end, but they kind of left us on a cliffhanger on her telling him that she had a baby with him. And I'm hopeful. Luna gonna have her daddy. Is her name Luna? I think her name Luna. Luna gonna have herself a daddy, y'all. I'm happy. But what got me this episode was zoe for one okay zoe now you quit school because you want to focus on your your dream job you get the dream job one room will go it's around around about you you quit it now you're back at cal u you're running the road sis what, what are you gonna do when you're back at, at cal u I, I was supporting you when quitting for your dream but you're gonna quit your dream for what what, what exactly are you gonna be doing now Joey said she can come back to the tour. She can do that. La la. He's proud of her. But uh, sis, what are you gonna do? I really don't get it. You want to be back home because your friends are doing what? Just living their regular lives. Something they can update you about on Facetime. So I was kind of a little bit disappointed that she quit that tour because it seems like she's a quitter. She be quitting a lot of things. And um, I don't know if I'm going to rock with that, Zoe. Come on now. Pick something. If you're going to do school and stick with it, or you're going to do your dream and stick with it. What, what, what's going on? I don't get it. But when she came back, Aaron, before before I dive into Aaron and um, Zoe, 
Aaron's girl, Aaron goes to his girlfriend because his homeboys was like, yeah, you was wrong for telling Zoe first. No girl want to hear that, la da la da So he pretty much gets old girl back. And I'm like, uh. And then he goes to tell Zoe like, oh, well, my girl told me like, she felt uncomfortable with how close we were. So I'm going to like fall back. And Zoe just slowly but surely mentioned like, oh yeah, she talked to you too. And he was like, she talked to you too. What you mean? I'm like, and she like, yeah, she came to me and said to fall back off you. And I didn't say anything because I respect that. Like I do need to fall up off you because I literally came to tell you that I love you and I wanted to be with you. And you told me you had a girlfriend. So and he like, you said, wasn't You love what? And then they kissed again. But y'all know, even they always kissing and all this stuff. And so it don't really be mean or nothing. But I think this may be the one that puts those two together. And I'm hoping for it. It may be a little inkling of hope. Just an inkling. Because you know these TV shows love to play with your emotions. Especially with these two. Always kissing and never getting together. So... We're going to see how this unfolds. I'm really looking forward to y'all. I know I'm rooting for them too. Woo, woo, woo. I'm rooting for them. I'm rooting for them, y'all. For all American. Y'all, they finally gave us the freaking Vegas scene. They finally showed us what happened in Vegas. They dedicated a whole episode to what happened in Vegas. And... A lot went down. So, I'm going to just run through this stuff real quick because I don't really want to care to talk about it, go deep, dive deep. I'm just excited about what I had discovered, what they had said, what had went down, and everything like that. So, in Vegas, Jordan and Simone got married. Huh? What was it? That would make sense as to why Jordan is so concerned with Simone. Everybody was saying, like, you're distracted with that girl. You worry about that girl too much. That's what his granddaddy was saying. He was like, with all due respect, imagine being his granddaddy. Yes, because that's his wife. They got married. But that um, will not explain why him and Simone was kind of, well, I guess it will explain. Because Simone was like, maybe we don't know each other like we thought. And I'm like, why would she be saying that? But she's saying that because they got married in Vegas months ago. Or a month or so ago. And now they probably second guessing it because all the trials and tribulations that they've been having since being married. But I'm like, wow, so y'all, y'all gonna throw that on us like that. Like, so they got married, huh? Hmm, interesting. And then um, the Patience and JP drama, we actually got to see that unfold with the little jewel. And they really, they cracked me up. TV shows cracked me up. Why y'all go ahead and switch her, her daddy out like that? That was not the original JP. Like we weren't gonna know it is. That is so funny to me. When TV shows switch characters, like I of course they know we gonna know this, but it's just funny to me. Because now we gotta re get reacclimated to this whole new face in the character. But I guess it's okay because he's not really a reoccurring well, he's not really like a permanent character. He just pop up sometimes. But we still remember who was the original daddy. He didn't wanna do the show no more. Like what? What had happened? Tell me. But, um, yeah. And then Layla finally deciding that she wants to be with Spencer. And she was having that battle on the trip. And then she finally went to the room to, you know, be with him. And right before that, this is, this is what's good, y'all. So this whole freaking season Olivia and Spencer been saying, so we're not just we're just not gonna talk about what happened in Vegas. We're just not gonna talk about what happened in Vegas. They were alluding to the fact that they had sex. I had kind of figured that when they flashed the sex scene, it wasn't Olivia and Spencer. I had kind of I kind of figured that that wasn't them, that that was him and Layla. But the way that they were setting it up made it seem like it really was that they had sex and it wasn't nothing more. But I'm so glad that it was so much more to the situation. In Vegas, these two realize that they are in love with each other. And it makes sense 
while when the therapist told Spencer like, oh, Olivia, you in love with her. She ain't your stuck point, but you in love with her. But that's another conversation we gonna have later. And he's like, no, no, I ain't in love with her. Uh -uh. I'm like, I'm with Layla. I'm like, oh yeah, I know that. And it's so crazy that the therapist knew that. And when the therapist said that, y'all, it had me on 10. Because I'm like, yes, I feel it. I feel the vibes. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel the vibes. I feel it. But then to motherfucking see the shit, see them both realize the love, to see it happen, that's all I was waiting for. The way he was looking at her when she was watching his brother get married, I mean, watching her brother get married, and the way she was looking at him when he was watching her brother getting married and the thoughts and the scenes and everything that was just playing in their head and how they love. <sighs> yeah. I knew since season one when she had that crush on him that they would fall in love with each other. Not because she had the crush, but because the way their friendship had evolved. They're very good friends. And they've had situations that make you grow as friends. Then they may have situations that make you realize, like, damn, if you wasn't alive, I would be hurt because I didn't explore the situation with you as more than a friend. So the fact that they sprung that up upon us and the way that Sp I told y'all that Spencer James was not going to lie to Layla. He wasn't going to lie to her. He told her the whole story. He even told her about how right before she came, him and Olivia was just having a conversation about what they would do if they explored their love for each other with Asher and Layla. And how right after she left, you came in and we had sex. Yes, I had sex with you. Probably was thinking about Olivia. That's tough for a woman to digest. Because it's like, was that shit even real? Don't fucking play with me. Don't be doing nothing with me when you think about somebody else. So I understand how Layla gonna be mad than mug. She gonna be so mad. They cut that, they cut the episode off right after he finished the story. And that was what happened. Ooh, child, I cannot wait for Monday. Well, I watch it on Tuesdays. I cannot wait for Tuesday, baby. Because it is about to get good once everything comes to the light. And that time I'm gonna wrap up. Oh, I can't wrap up the show. I almost wrapped it up and then give y'all one division. <laughs> so let's dive into one division, y'all. For one division, now this was the series finale. That's what the episode was called, series finale. So I'm assuming that's it for one division. No season two, um, which is fine because they ended it. Yep, the whole debacle, the whole situation, it was pretty much ended. I do want to get closure on what's going to happen with Hayworth. Um, but, okay. So, my guess was wrong. That witch was not trying to help her harness her magic and use it correctly. She was trying to drain it from her and take it because she felt like she didn't know how to use it right. But, baby, what, she, what Agnes did teach Wanda... What's how to not let a other witch bitch come in and steal your shit? Because she thought she was sucking all that power out of her. And y'all, she popped up them runes. She said runes. The only witch that can use her magic inside is the one who cast it. And I'm like, let's go, Wanda. Because I thought she was out for the count, y'all. I really thought she was out for the count. But she wasn't. She was still in that game. She still got her power. But what I love to see was her boys. Her boys used their powers to fight with their family. They're, they're a super family. They gave me Incredibles vibes. They really gave me the Incredibles vibes. And I want to talk about Miss Monica, baby. When Hayworth was shooting that gun and she literally absorbed those bullets. I just caught a chill right now. Because as black people in society right now, the police are killing us with bullets and we're not bulletproof. So to see her be bulletproof and absorb that like, mm, I eat that shit for breakfast, that really touched me. It really did. I really felt some type of way and I'm getting the chill right now just making this connection in my head. They really did something with that. Even though 
she was protecting some little white kids. Man, she was protecting the kids. Or cool, whatever. But it really touched me to see a bulletproof woman, a bulletproof black woman with a fro. A brown skinned woman at that. Come on, Marvel. Come on with the representation. Stop playing with us. They always putting on. They always putting on, man. I swear to God. I don't know if that really just came, that just really came to me right now. Because I really didn't make that connection watching it. But now that I'm thinking about it, that ticked me. I, I felt that. Like, bulletproof us all, please. Because, baby, they be coming for us. But let me get back to the story. And to see Vision fight the new Vision, baby. But Vision is a smart man, a smart machine, a smart piece of machinery. He got that other vision to realize your problem not with me, your problem with them. You are me, I am you. They said for you to come destroy vision. Are we not the same? Are you not vision? Connected the pieces in that other vision's head and he left. He was out of there. So I don't know if he gonna pop up or be alive and you know that maybe Wanda can be with him and all type of stuff because it was kind of alluding to it when, y'all, it was kind of alluding to it when they actually, you know, Vision and the sons actually like dissipated. He alluded to the fact that he always gonna come back to her. He might come back to her in a different form. So I'm wondering if he's going to come back to her as that all white Vision. Who knows? But the thing that got me was... I really thought Wanda had figured out a way to have this world for her family to live in and, you know, still free everybody. But clearly that wasn't the case. She actually had to shut down her little world she created. And when shutting down her world, she lost her loves again. And my heart really broke for her because they had made it seem like everything was all good. But I knew something wasn't good when Vision, when she Vision was about to say like um some some boys, and she looked at him and he was just like, "I'm really proud of y'all," because they both knew that they could not tell their sons that they was about to disappear. That's something that they wouldn't be able to handle or be okay with in that moment. Like it wouldn't have ended so peacefully. She put her sons to bed. She was turning off the lights and all of that in the house, letting everything settle. And Vision was like, nah, baby, it's bad to go out in the dark. He pretty much was saying, like, I want to see you up until every last second that I get. And that really touched my heart. That touched it. Yeah. And that concluded. Oh, and the one thing I was right about, it was her grief that caused that that world her grief her grief her grief overtook and she couldn't control it even though she was a witch and she had these magical powers her grief brought that out of her it was the grief so i was right about something but y'all that concludes wandavision i really enjoyed it i'm going to try to watch all of the marvel movies like in order of the actual story that they have because every marvel movie show whatever that i watch i love it all of the movies can stand alone as its own piece the tv shows can stand alone as its own piece but they do all share a story so i need to you know watch them and piece it together and just get that full story i'm gonna have to do that i probably won't do individual videos on those movies because i just want to watch them for entertainment and sometimes i don't be able to express everything that i want to say about a movie on camera and i just want to enjoy it i want to take it all in oh because it just be so, those movies be so good they stand alone on their own like you literally do not have to watch all of them you don't have to be a marvel fan to enjoy a marvel movie so that's what i like about them but i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video but i do want to show y'all this shirt i ordered from a black owned company she is a motivational speaker um a life coach and she now has merch 
Um, her brand is called Live in Peace. So her first piece of merch is this shirt here. It say, my peace comes first. And then this is the back. Really cute. And then on the sleeve, it has a verse, a prayer verse, and which in what inspired the shirt. So if y'all want one of these shirts, I'm going to drop her link in the description. So go ahead and support her. Another black woman, my girl Pre, go ahead and support her. And this concludes the video.